This is Michiana's breaking news and weather station. MNC. News Talk 95.3 FM and 95.3 MNC.com. MNC News Time 5.05. I'm Amelia Lee in the MNC News Center. And good morning. I'm John Zimney. Middle of the work week on Wednesday, May the 4th, 2022. The news continues now with our top local stories on Michiana's Morning News. We begin with some primary election results. In St. Joseph County, the Commissioner District 1 race is set. It will be incumbent Democrat Don Westerhausen taking on Republican challenger, Carl Baxmeyer. There was a primary upset on the St. Joe County Council as Jan Schatzel defeated incumbent Richard File and will run for the District C seat this fall. And a tight race between Republicans Frank Lucchese and Bob Barnes splitting the vote. But Barnes edged out the incumbent and will appear on the ballot for the District 1 Commission seat. Michigan's primary isn't until August, but there was a special election yesterday as voters approved the Edwardsburg School Tax Renewal. The district requested $18 per every one thousand dollars a taxable value that means about 2.3 million dollars for the schools it does not apply to primary residents also voters in the constantine school district they voted down their 38 million dollar bonding proposal you can see results from all the races at our website 953mnc.com five o'clock traffic and weather this hour brought to you by the x fog and i fog system whether it's for work or play keep your protective eyewear on and clear visit exfog.com today and coming up in 60 seconds a man has been charged after the deadly shooting of a teenage boy in elkhart last week mnc news time 508 <laughs> This portion of Michiana's Morning News brought to you by the r Car Company. With a huge inventory of quality pre-owned vehicles, cars, crossovers, trucks, SUVs, and minivans, shop today at rbcarcompany.com. As the local news watch continues. A man has been charged with murder after a 17-year-old died during a drug deal last week in the 1600 block of Stevens Avenue in Elkhart. 21-year-old Alberto Avellino Alvarez confessed to police he shot the teen repeatedly after the teen shot him first over a gram of pot. The police report detailed the shooting, with Avellino Alvarez emptying the magazine in the gun, loading another, and con- continuing the firing shots. Police found shell casing and evidence of marijuana inside the home and evidence of drug dealings on Alvarez's cell phone. He's due in court on Thursday. A man was arrested in St. Joseph County on Saturday morning after he allegedly threatened to kill his ex-girlfriend after a fight. The victim told officers that the fight started when she did not let her ex-boyfriend, Dylan Eyestone, take her car to Taco Bell. She says that he told her that he would kill her and then himself. The woman says that she grabbed her phone to call police, but he smacked it out of her hand. According to officials, Eyestone got a handgun from the bedroom and threatened her life a second time. ABC 57 News reports the woman's father took the gun from Eyestone's hand. Police say he then left the house to come back a few hours later where he was arrested. He faces charges of intimidation, interference with the reporting of a crime, and resisting law enforcement. His court date is set for later in May. Helob Hatch, MNC News. A vehicle and garage were damaged in a fire early yesterday morning. It happened inside of an attached garage in the 1500 block of North Park in Constantine when the engine caught on fire and spread throughout the car. The garage had heat, smoke, and water damage while the car was completely damaged. There were no injuries. MNC News Time 511. There's a new official green space in South Bend. It was unveiled this past weekend on the city's southeast side near the intersection of Bronson and Edgewater along the trees. WNDU reports Edgewater Bank has been established for residents' gatherings, for kids to play, and for people just to sit and enjoy the view. You can learn more about green spaces in South Bend at South Bend Venues, Parks, and Arts website. Michael McIntyre, MNC News. And the Indiana High School Athletic Association voted to add boys volleyball and girls wrestling as an emerging sports. That was done through a unanimous vote at the annual Board of Directors meeting that took place earlier this week. The IHSAA will now provide backing for the two sports with an eye toward becoming recognized sports when half of the membership is participating in the sport. Ian Randall, MNC News. Now, the top trending stories from 95.3 and 95.3 MNC.com. MNC News Time 515. Murder charges have been filed in connection with a 2018 murder. Sean Gill was shot and killed at his mobile home in Van Buren County. The two men prosecutors say killed him are 37-year-old Jonathan Batiste Anderson and 32-year-old Patrick James Watkins. The two were identified as the gunmen seen on Gill's home security system. Both are charged with open murder and a felony firearm count. A Gary woman has pleaded guilty to mail fraud after failing to report her father's death and collecting his Social Security benefits. 
Elizabeth Harris's dad died back in 2010. She collected around $200,000 before she was found out. She's been sentenced to one-year house arrest in order to pay back all that money to the Social Security Administration. And new details have been revealed about the circumstances surrounding the death of a teen on a Florida amusement park ride last month. The father of a friend of 14-year-old Tyree Sampson, who witnessed the accident, has told Orlando deputies Sampson appeared to fall out of his seat when passengers who were being plunged downward on the free fall ride passed a yellow reflective tape halfway down the tower. Leon Howard says when the teen hit the ground, he appeared to be breathing but was unresponsive. Howard's son was also on the ride at the time of the accident. Sampson, who was more than six feet tall and weighed more than 300 pounds, had traveled to Orlando with his friend's family for vacation. Samson's parents announced a lawsuit last week against the ride's owner, manufacturer, and landlord, accusing them of negligence and saying they failed to provide a safe ride. Lee Silicera, Fox News. Visit exfog.com today. Coming up next on Michiana's Morning News, a closer look at the school funding issues in front of voters yesterday in southwest Michigan. MNC News Time 518. Michiana's Morning News continues on News Talk 95.3, Michiana's News Channel, your breaking news and weather station. 521, John Zimney alongside Amelia Lee here for Michiana's Morning News. Consistently cool weather continuing. Oh, cloudy weather too. Not going to see any sun today. Friday, the train. uh... Tommy Lee, MNC News. From our reporting partners at ABC 57, it was a night of highs and lows in Michigan last evening with Edwardsburg voters approving funding for schools and Constantine residents voting down their funding question. Edwardsburg District residents voted to renew the public school millage, 725 yeses to 250 noes, meaning the district will be getting over $2 million in funding for the next school year, avoiding a budget shortfall. But Constantine's $38 million construction bond, which was set to update school infrastructure, was rejected by voters, voting 1,087 no's to 588 yeses. We reached out to both district superintendents on how they're reacting to the news. It's great to live in a community like Edwardsburg that, that values education as much as we do. To, to see this in a vote, for, you know, basically three to one for it really makes a really makes me uh, just feel just blessed to be part of the group that we have here in Edwardsburg. It's disappointing. Um, there's just a lot of people that put in time and effort to reach out to our stakeholders and community members to show the strategic plan that we have put in place for our kids, our students. And, uh, you know, there's some needs, some definite needs within the bond um, that we're going to have to figure out a plan. Um, to get those needs met. Wisely added that they had hoped to use those funds to make repairs to one of the school building's roofs. Now he says they're going to have to meet with the school board to come up with a spending plan to make those repairs. Jordan Hatfield, ABC 57 News. You can see results from all the races throughout Michiana at our website, 953mnc.com. Up next on Michiana's Morning News, we'll bring you traffic, weather, and the lowest gas prices. It's 524. This is Michiana's breaking news and weather station. MNC. News Talk 95.3 FM and 95.3 MNC.com. MNC News Time 532. I'm Amelia Lee in the MNC News Center. Good morning. Great to be with you. I'm Sean Simney. Thank you for tuning in to Michiana's Morning News as we continue on with our top local stories. Indiana's primary night may not have been exciting, but still we have some results with races in which former President Trump played a part. In Indiana's solidly GOP 9th District, Republican State Senator Aaron Hochin beat Mike Sodrell, a former congressman who was trying to get back into the House. Some political analysts noted she was the leading candidate who mentioned former President Trump in her ads. 6th District Republican Congressman Greg Pence, brother of former Vice President Mike Pence, won his primary. And even though Mike Pence and the former president have disagreed about January 6th and what role Pence could have played, Trump still endorsed Greg in the primary. Now, Indiana's Republican Senator Todd Young did not face a primary challenge a feat in and of itself, according to some analysts, as he ran unopposed even without the former president's backing. Jessica Rosenthal, Fox News. Some local results now. Jake Teshka will once again be on the Republican ballot, aiming to retain his House District 7 seat. Timothy Wesco defeated his Republican challenger for the House District 21 seat. And longtime lawmaker Kurt Nicely lost his bid for the November ballot for the House District 22 seat to challenger Craig Snow. You can see results from all
all the races at our website, 953mnc.com. 530 News is brought to you by Borkholder Buildings and Supply. If it can be built in an office, a farm, or anywhere else, Borkholder has the highest quality for any need. Borkholder Buildings and Supply can help. Call today. MNC News Time 533. Charges have now been filed against three people in connection to a murder dating back to 2018. Sean Gill was shot and killed at his mobile home in Van Buren. The two men prosecutors say killed him are 37-year-old Jonathan Baptiste Anderson and 32-year-old Patrick James Watkins. The two are identified as the gunman seen on Gill's home security system. Both are charged with murder and a felony firearm count. A third person, 31-year-old Roxanne Marie Mills, faces a count of perjury. Both she and Watkins are already in the Michigan Department of Corrections for a conviction on an unrelated charge. Caleb Hatch, MNC News. An eight-year-old child's death has been deemed suspicious. Officers with the St. Joseph County Department of Public Safety were called early Tuesday morning to the 700 block of Columbia Avenue. The child was pronounced dead at the scene. The Michigan State Police Crime Lab was called in to investigate the scene. An autopsy is being conducted, and officers say there is no threat to the community. New this morning, a former Colts quarterback wants to help police and firefighters with their mental health. Jim Sorgi, co-founder of Pro Team Tactical Performance, announced an online platform to support police and firefighters mental health. Get to the point where public safety just sees so much that their bucket just gets too full and it overflows. Well, let's give them a tool that l- allows them to empty that bucket along their career to hopefully never get to that breaking point. Sorgi on Inside Indiana Business. Pro Team was founded in 2018 to help officers with injury prevention. Now their program known as SHIELD will give police and firefighters the resources they need for mental wellness. Harrison Silcox, Network Indiana. The city of South Bend has begun the search for a new community police review board director. The Common Council has been conducting interviews with 10 potential candidates. So far, they're still accepting applications and don't have a deadline set for finding the new director. If Hoosiers have a new idea on how to use technology, they usually have to go to places like Silicon Valley to look for funding. However, a bill backed by Senator Todd Young would set up new technology hubs throughout the U.S. through partnerships with research schools like Purdue. Building on existing assets, uh, existing uh, bases of talent, whether it's in the universities or, or outside the walls of the university. He says his plan would help the country maximize talent and stay competitive, which China. The city of South Bend and La Casa de Amistad have announced new support for immigrants in South Bend. The city will provide money to La Casa to contract interpretation and translation services and to deliver legal and transportation services for immigrants, including more than 60 recently resettled Afghans. La Casa estimates that this funding could benefit 350 or more individuals in South Bend. Local lawyers and professionals who would like to volunteer their time or service to help immigrants in South Bend are asked to contact La Casa del Amistad. Now, the top trending stories from 95.3 MNC and 95.3 MNC.com. MNC News Time 545. A man has been charged with murder after a 17-year-old died in a shooting that took place during a drug deal. It happened last week in the 1600 block of Stevens Avenue in Elkhart. Police say 21-year-old Alberto Avellino Alvarez confessed to pulling the trigger repeatedly after the teen shot him first over a gran of pot. Alvarez is due in court tomorrow. The European Union has proposed phasing out Russian oil imports by year's end. That plan, which could be approved as early as this week, is less ambitious than the immediate ban that some countries wanted, but it still represents a dramatic shift for the 27-nation bloc, which back in March told the United States it couldn't join a Russian energy embargo. And police across the country have noticed an uptick in thefts of full U-Haul trucks. Thieves look for the trucks in hotel parking lots, knowing that the owners have packed them full of belongings for their move. Don Reed and his wife were moving from Alaska to Florida. How can people be so awful? We had boxes packed to the roof all the way to the back of the truck, and they went through every single box, opened it up. Anything that was worth the value, they took out. The rest of it, they dumped on the floor. Police say rental moving trucks are especially susceptible to theft because of their engine systems. Police recommend a steering wheel lock and a small GPS device to assess in tracking down your truck. MNC News Time 546.